Welcome, and in this video course, we are looking at the CyberOps Associate version one course. This course is going to cover the skills and knowledge needed for successfully handling the tasks and duties, responsibilities of an associate level security analyst working at a security operations center. The goal of this video series is to help prepare learners for the Cisco 200-201 certification. That's focusing on understanding the Cisco Cybersecurity Operation Fundamentals course, known as CBROPS. Module 8 is all about address resolution protocol, known as ARP. So here we're looking at MAC addresses and IP addresses. Uh, predominantly we're looking at IPv4, since ARP only uses IPv4. We're going to be looking at and analyzing ARP by examining an Ethernet frame, and then we're going to look at some ARP requests, issues, and the impact it may have on the network. So again, first one is MAC and IP addresses. First thing to point out is uh, these are not the right MAC addresses. I'm going to grab a pen. We shortened it, so instead of showing six pairs, we're only showing two pairs. Uh, again, a MAC address is a 48-bit number. So, a MAC address is also known as a physical address, and it's used for local connection, local connectivity, local being part of the LAN. Also, that means we're dealing with MAC addresses being part of the layer 2. If we are dealing with anything leaving the network, that will deal with a layer 3 address known as a logical address, also referred to as an IP address. If we need to leave the network, we will use the MAC address to reach our default gateway. Our default gateway will strip away the layer 2 header and look at the layer 3 data. It will then replace the layer 2 header with its own MAC address and its own destination. Here's a perfect example. Here we have one pair of MAC addresses. As we go to our layer 3 device, the layer 3 device will strip away those MAC address, source and destination. It will replace it with the source address being its MAC address and the destination being the next hops MAC address. That builds the next layer 2 frame. When router 2 receives it, it will strip away the old layer 2 data. It will replace it with its source MAC address and the destination MAC address will be the end server. Each router will strip away the MAC address examining its IP address since we are communicating on a remote network. The goal is to be able to look at the next network. So all of this is how ARP functions. To illustrate uh, a problem while sending a packet to another host on the same local network, that's because the IP address is known but the MAC address is not. So what do we do when we do not know the MAC address, but we know the IP address? We use ARP to determine the MAC address of the local device while knowing its IP address only. We send a broadcast. I know this IP address. Who, does this, who has this address? What is the MAC address of this device? And the goal is to resolve the IPv4 address to a MAC address. They can also be used to maintain a table of addresses, IPv4 to MAC address. This is called address mapping. So the overall function is to be able to send the broadcast. I have this IP address who, who has the matching MAC address. It will go to everyone and only the IP address that it has will respond and it will update by sending its MAC address back to the original source. This helps build the ARP table. 
sometimes referred to as the ARP cache. That means the switch will start building this mapping of addresses between layer four and layer three, sorry, between layer three and layer two. This device will also then start building a mapping for what ports are attached to which devices, what MAC address is attached to those physical ports. So when a device needs to determine a MAC address, it will map to the IP4 uh, address and no entry is found. The IPv4 address and its ARP table, then the ARP request is sent out. The ARP request is a broadcast. I thought that was really funny is That's not my computer. The machine that Cisco is using to build these PowerPoints wasn't activated. You can see the activate windows, go to settings option right here. That's kind of interesting. Anyways, so only the device at the targeted IP4 address will respond with the appropriate MAC address. Remember, IPv6 uses a similar process, but it uses neighbor discovery. It uses either a neighbor acknowledgement or a neighbor solicitation. IPv6 does not use ARP. It only uses neighbor discovery. So the role of ARP in communication is it allows for that local connectivity on a local network. So removing entries from the ARP table. Essentially, the devices will purge old information. So if a MAC address or an IP address hasn't been used in X amount of time, it will age out. That means the devices will forget it because it's been too long. We can look at an ARP table by doing a uh, ARP TAC A on a device. So I will do my computer, go to my command line, ARP TAC A. These are all of the devices that I currently know about. I have a lot of virtual machines. And so that's why these addresses right here between 27 and 193, these are all my one computer, but with virtual addresses. I have a lot of virtual NICs because of, I have several VMs running. We have a lab to examine our Ethernet frame, which you guys will do that individually. We will be, I will be posting videos of these labs just when I have time. Lastly, ARP issues. We already know that ARP sends out broadcasts. That means these broadcasts could flood the local media. So what can we do to prevent that? Well, one thing is to understand that we need to have an appropriately set up network. A bus or a ring doesn't function very well in networks like this. So we have to use uh, CSMA, CA, CSMA slash CD, Media Act, CSMA CD to prevent collisions from occurring if we're doing a shared media like this. Another issue is we can spoof our ARP requests. I've showed videos of a man in the middle attack and how it can be done as long as you can spoof the default gateway. And that's one of the issues is threat actors can use ARP spoofing to do ARP poisoning or to do um, redirection of data or data in, uh, interception, things like that. ARP spoofing is pretty easy to do and ARP spoofing is essentially us being able to pretend to be a different device on the network or to have a certain MAC address when we really do not. So that is actually it for this chapter. We talked about IP addresses both physical and logical addresses. We talked about layer two versus layer three addresses. 
layer two being a MAC address, which is a physical address, layer three being a IP address, also known as a logical address. We talked through ARP and how ARP allows us to communicate between or find information between an IP address and an unknown MAC address. So that way we can determine the appropriate MAC address. We looked at ARP using IPv4 network. We looked at neighbor discovery when looking at IPv6 network. And we wrapped up with ARP spoofing and ARP poisoning as possible types of attacks. If you have any questions or concerns, please reach out. Thank you.